following the reading of the proclamation, we now ask Mr. Frank Scatoro, president of the Grand Monument Association, if he would share some remarks with us. Mr. Scatoro. Thank you so much. And good morning, everyone. I'd like to extend to a warm welcome on behalf of the Grand Monument Association. You know, it's an important year for anniversaries. Uh, first, we continue to mark the 150th anniversary of the Civil War. 150 years ago, the U.S. Grant became the Supreme Commander of the Union Army, and in that role, he would face his greatest challenge. Uh, for three years, a total of six commanders in the East tried but could not succeed in achieving the decisive strategic victory that was necessary to defeat the Confederacy. Grant was the seventh, so nothing about his success was inevitable. Although he was the general in chief, he would follow the Union's principal army in the East, the Army of the Potomac, as its de facto commander against General Robert E. Lee's Army of Northern Virginia. 150 years ago today, on April 27, 1864, General Grant wrote this to his wife Julia in the playful and teasing tone that the two of them shared in their rich marriage. This is my 42nd birthday. Getting old, am I not? I received a very short letter from you this evening, scratched off in a very great hurry, as if you had something much more pleasing, if not more important to do, than to write to me. I'll excuse you, though. About his adversary, he continued, don't know exactly the day when I will start or whether he will come here before I am ready to move. Well, one week later, it was General Grant who made the first move as he began his campaign by crossing the Rapidan River in Virginia. He and Lee then fought a brutal battle in the wilderness with heavy losses on both sides. Although a tactical stalemate, the three-day battle failed to halt Grant's progress southward and was a strategic victory for the Union. Within three days, the Union initiative in the East had reached greater heights under Grant than it had under his predecessors during the preceding three years. During the 43 days that marked the Wilderness Campaign, General Grant moved his men over 100 miles of difficult terrain, avoided all supply problems, changed his supply base four times, made nine flanking movements, and crossed four rivers in the face of the enemy. This was as dynamic a campaign as the Eastern Theater had ever seen, and as modern a campaign as the world had ever seen. After a long and hard search, Lincoln had finally found his general. Victory finally was in sight. Now having mentioned this important anniversary, uh, I want, want to note a second anniversary. The 15th anniversary of the passage of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Among other things, religion, sex, or national origin in public accommodations and in the workplace. Now some might wonder how that relates to the man buried in this monument. To that we can respond with President Harry Truman's words, the only thing new in this world is the history you don't know. Long before that 1964 milestone, President Grant was in the White House and he used his position to advance the cause of equality for former slaves whose emancipation he had advanced on the battlefield. Thanks to his efforts, the Civil Rights Act of 1875 became law. It prohibited racial discrimination in public accommodations 89 years before the more recent Civil Rights Act was passed. And in a speech that he delivered in Des Moines in 1875, President Grant proclaimed, let us labor to add all needful guarantees for the greater security of free thought, free speech, a free press, pure morals, unfettered religious sentiments, and equal rights and privileges to all men, irrespective of nationality, color, or religion. No president before him ever endorsed a full accommodation of such a wide range of people into the scheme of American democracy. Now sadly, following the end of his presidency, the country retreated from Reconstruction and reversed much of the progress that earlier had been made but we still have a constitution and an important part of Grant's legacy. post the war amendments that promise equal protection of the laws and the right to vote regardless of color. At the dedication of this monument in 1897, President William McKinley had this to say, a great life never dies. Great deeds are imperishable. Great names immortal. 
General Grant's services and character will continue undiminished in influence and advance in the estimation of mankind so long as liberty remains the cornerstone of free government and integrity of life, the guarantee of good citizenship. McKinley's words have even more meaning as we mark both Civil War and Civil Rights anniversaries. Liberty is precious and comes at a great price. We must do all we can to preserve it, just as we must do all we can to preserve monuments like this, which embody our most transcendent values. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your profound remarks. Uh, let me mention you'll be hearing from uh, all of the persons seated on the dais. Uh, we do have a, a special guest that we will hear from.